Hello and welcome to Second Chance Gambling Addiction and Mental Health Recovery. Joining me on my first guest appearance, True Story, My Story episode, is my friend Jamie Dyson. Um, just in case you were wondering with the COVID, we are in a support bubble because we have a child under the age of one. Um, so him and his wife are in our support bubble. Um, but it also happens that we're both suffered from gambling addiction and mental health issues um, and I'm going to hand you over to Jamie now but first of all thank you for coming on and um, telling your story it is all to help others and hopefully you will benefit from hearing Jamie's story as well as a few questions at the end that I will ask him and hopefully like I said someone out there will benefit from this so over to Jamie Thank you, Kieran. Thank you for having me on your channel uh, to explain my uh, experience over the past 10, 11 years um, that I've been gambling prior to me stopping. Um, well, uh, you'll all be asking me, really, where, where did it all start? Well, I was 17. Um, prior to that, as a child, the my family used to bet a lot on the... Well, not a lot, but every year on the Grand National, which... To be honest, at that time, I never used to think anything of it. Um, I know I used to, used to pick a number and I used to want it to win. But I don't think, as as I sit here now, I don't think that um, was, a, was a trigger that, that set it off. Or I know there's triggers that we talk about, triggers and setting how we set, uh, set ourselves off. And, but I, I think, to be honest, I think the main, the main thing that, uh, springs to my mind was when I was 17 I actually placed my first bet again illegally um, I went into the bookmakers and there was a couple of a uh, couple of us guys who were doing mechanical engineering in Rotherham and um, the college in Rotherham and, and I put my first bet on and and to be honest it was at the time I didn't know too much of it and I don't know, like yourself, Kieran. When you first, when you first place your bet, you don't really know what you're doing. And but it was actually it was a it was an accumulator about I'd say about that long, and with loads of football teams on. And I thought, great. I thought this. I saw the potential winnings, and I thought this will be fantastic. This, if I can place one of these every every weekend, and, and I've got a good chance uh, of winning, haven't I? I? So I told myself, and um, and it wasn't. It wasn't until, I reckon, a few months after that, placing my first bet um, at college when I was 17, that I realised that I was doing it more frequently. And it was coming um, a bane in my life. And to be honest, I did realise that it was becoming out of hand. But I didn't want to say, say anything at the time. And again, I, I was 17 and I knew I had... I knew that people in my family, for a start, they, they'd they have a bet. And my uncle always used to say, bet, make sure that you could bet uh, more than you could. Um, never bet more than what you could afford. And I couldn't grasp that. Um, I, I mean, I started a couple of years after that. I started my first job at um, in Sheffield at Steelworks. And every day that I was there as an apprentice and I, after my time... Um, I always had a bet on. I can never think of um, of a day with that I'd never had a bet on. Um, and I'm actually in an pre apprenticeship. Um, I was in a privileged position. I was lucky to be um, to have an apprenticeship at this um, the big steel works in, in Sheffield. And and to be honest, I was I was blowing my money away left, right, and centre. Um, at the time, I lived in I was living at Rotherham. I was renting in Rotherham with my um, my girlfriend now wife. Um, and it and it was a massive thing for me that I was I was sleeping, and and I mean I were having dreams about my next bet. I'd wake up in the morning thinking, great, what am I what am I doing next? Um, but it'd be football, it'd be tennis, it'd be horse racing. I mean I was a massive sports um sports gambler, um but I mean there's slots there were slots there were anything to win money I'd I'd, I'd have a go on but I, I mean. Um, it was football and it was sport that um, I know myself, my friend Kieran knows that um, that was my my biggest bugbear uh, when I was gambling. 
Um, and it and it just carried on from there. And, and as time progressed, um, it got worse. Um, and I still didn't say anything. My my wife, I, I I used to ask for money, and that I'd let the next bet roll. It'd lose. I'd ask for more money. Um, and this continued. I, now, I mean, I've been with my wife since two thousand nine now, um, two thousand twenty. So, a lot of years she's had to put up with a lot of heartache. Um, so, I mean, and I, I again, I only can tell my and uh, my story. But for anyone out there who's struggling, um, or has any similar similarities uh, in the way that I'm um, I'm talking and saying. I, the acts that uh, that I used to carry out, um, I mean, I would say just please try your hardest to nip it in the bud, um, because as time goes on, it, the it worsens, the gambling urges worsen, the the addiction just gets to you, um, and to be honest, the person that you, I mean, I always look at myself now. Um, as when I was younger, as a child, that's the that's the closest thing that uh, that's come that I can think uh, that springs to mind that that I was my hundred percent that I was my true self, um, and then the addiction, as time goes on, it changes you into a monster, into a demon, um, and you lose a lot of your family, you you'll go out for meals, you go you have big events on people's weddings, people's birthdays, and you're constantly on your phone, you're thinking about your next bet. And not just that, you're just thinking about, not just on your phone, it was just, for me, well, which which book is can I go to next, which one will be giving me the best prices, best odds. I mean, it was constant. The the amount of strength, the amount of strength that it zaps out of you, um, it's just unbelievable. And then, like I say, it's, it's, Building up the courage and realizing that you've got a problem. I mean, I had I started after the I mentioned the steelworks uh, in Sheffield where I was gambling every day and and blowing money away. Um, I had got a an interview to go to another a highly responsible job that I'm in currently in the moment, and I must admit that when I did I I, I was privileged to get that job, um, and the first few months, um, into that job. I was doing exactly the same, even though it was a lot more money. Um, and I know money's not it's not a massive factor if if as long as someone's happy, I mean that's that's the main thing for myself. Um but again, that wasn't enough for me to stop and to speak out. Um, and at and at GA that I'm at at the minute, we talk about step one and just it, that's basically admitting that you're powerless over gambling. And I didn't want to admit that. Um and it carried on. And carried on where it, it got to a stage where in 2018 June 2018 with myself Kieran um, and I'm forever grateful for that still um, and my, my wife um, it was Kieran Kieran's initial idea because he'd been to GA for many years before myself um, and I didn't want to know to be honest it was Kieran my wife that pushed me to go and I were always even before I stopped gambling and before my first meeting, ever meeting at GA, um, I always used to say to him, I'm not as bad as your all of you at GA and, and Kieran. And I look in the mirror now and I just see a petulant child just not wanting to admit that he's, he's don't want he basically doesn't want to admit defeat of a of a gambling. Um, because I'll admit to this day I did not want to bet. I was forced to go to GA, um, and and I know gamblers. Uh, I'm mentioning GA. Sorry, I, I mean gamblers anonymous for those of you that that are out there and are seeking for help, seeking any help. But um, you really didn't want to go, did you? No, no, I didn't yeah. want to go. No, and I think correct me if I'm wrong. There was some fear of perhaps being judged or perhaps being sat and made a fuss of um, from fellow members and by all means this channel is not just to push Gamblers Anonymous because there's other help out there. Some people prefer one-on-one -on -one counselling. We are just telling our experience and what works for us. Um, 
But yeah, you didn't want to go to Gamblers Anonymous. And I remember that conversation that day. But really, if you look back now, the turning point in you deciding to go um, really has benefited you, hasn't it? And yeah. from what you found in that first meeting, can you just for the benefit of viewers? Just because I know what your reaction was both in the meeting and when you came out, and if you can just relay sort of that. It, yeah, it, it probably would benefit someone who may be thinking about attending either online meetings or or in person. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm so grateful for 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 you for you getting me um, to that first meeting and pushing me there, Kieran. And, and for anyone out there listening, the I cannot. I mean, the feeling after. You tell your story at Gamblers Anonymous, and that first meeting, I walk, walked into that room in Rotherham. I I felt welcomed. Everybody, and I mean everybody there, they don't judge you. They're not exactly the same as you, but same as in gambling. But we've all got the different stories and what. I, but the help at GA is second to none. And I'm so thankful for everyone there. I mean, I was welcomed with open arms. I went in there just thinking it's not going to be for me. Um, I mean, I had it in my head that, as I said before, prior to that meeting and saying to Kieran and my wife, I'm not as bad as everyone else at GA. But I had it in my head that I was going to carry on. Now, I told my story. Um, spent many of the, the meeting... Um, on myself and there were a lot of home truths and a lot of stuff hurt um, and a lot of stuff it was it, it, it was strange in a way because I was telling my story to people and it was like I was everything was being echoed and it was it was heightened when I were in that room because it really hit home that everything that I'd done and meant it meant me go to that place and um, gambling anonymous to get the help that I needed I mean I walked out of that meeting and it was my, it was just, all I can explain is I always say to this day just picture your temples been sometimes when you get in a date the pressure on your temples and the pulse that you get is not the nicest feeling I mean I walked out of that meeting and it felt like my head felt light but in a good way and um, as though I once said it weight will lifted from my shoulders but my head felt clear and it was good that I got everything out this in the open. Um, yeah. As I say at GA, never leave, don't leave anything out. Um, just like they say, for when you're gambling, or when you're not what, what, taking GA, GA away from this, if you tell someone everything, then it makes a problem a lot better um, in the long run. But, I mean, anyone who's struggling, GA is... And if you've not tried it like myself, and I weren't willing to, like I say, to try it, please, please give it a go. It could be the changing point in your life that you need to make your your life and the loved ones around you and their lives even better. Because I can't, I can't take back that time, the time that I come downstairs and I'd say to my wife, speak to her like rubbish, and say, put some more bloody money, shall we say, into my account. I need I need some more money. And I know Kieran knows, um, I mean, we used to gamble a lot together, didn't we, in, in the past as well. So um, it's it's hitting home now to me, speaking to you guys um, and girls. It's, yeah, it's emotional, but I, I think it comes from ourselves. The, yes, it's the addiction, as we speak about it, Gambles Anonymous. That's not our true personality and traits. It's the addiction that takes over. But we've got to want to do it for ourselves, which I admit to this day I wasn't willing to do. And um, again, I was forced by Kieran and my wife. And um, but twenty seventh of of June twenty eighteen. That what I can say. That was my the date of my last bet. And um, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yes. Yeah. So touch wood. Um. I, I remain gamble free, but again, Brilliant. it's one day at a time. But again, congratulations! I, I, I mean, congratulations to yourself as well, Kieran, for doing two years. 
Yeah, we've changed his life around and like you touched on there, we used to gamble together um, and I'm sure there will be other people out there who, yeah, they will gamble in isolation on their own, and secretive, but there will be also gamblers out there who gamble with their friends um, and in, in our experience, if you are gambling with someone on a regular basis, um, it, it can be very much a detrimental idea really to your finances, your mental well-being because you are close to someone who is gambling a lot also. The temptation's always there. Whether you've got the money or not, you'll find the money. If he has a big win or she has a big win, you'll, you'll think, why can't I? Can I do that? Vice versa. And the encouragement in doing that is also there. So... My, again, my only speaking from my experience is if you are gambling with someone else quite regularly, be it online or in person, I'd try and t at least take a break from that for a period of time and just to see whether you get any better on them. Um, because our experience is, I mean, we, we got to one stage, it started where we would just have a, um, a game of snooker and have a gamble on winner, you know, 10, 15 pound figures are relevant really and it started that just playing for a few pound against each other at snooker and of course if if the gambler in us if he beat me i'd tell him i'll see him next tuesday and call him a bunch of names and to be honest be vile and he would be to me because that's that gambler we want to win we want to yeah. win money but then it developed into where we was lying to each other's missuses um he might say what, what what did you say to your wife it, it, many she, things but yeah i mean we used to lie i used to lie i used to, I used to there was an instant i mean, i think the one that you are about hearing is the one that um i was getting someone a present and i needed um some money uh or Kira needed some money and then i'd obviously i'd spend that money and i and i'd gamble gamble it all so it, the lies and the deceit is just you look back now and it's almost you've got to laugh otherwise you'll cry because some of the stuff we did um all in order to get that bet on we would cause so much destruction as i touched on in my story and, and jamie's touched yeah. on in his but it's important that through telling our story we also highlight what you can do and like I've said, I'll just reiterate, and I'm sure Jamie will. If it's not Gambler's Anonymous Field, there's other help out there. There's there's Gambler where there's counselling, individual counselling as well um, that you can get on on uh, gambling addiction or any addiction, but and mental health in general um, because gambling and mental health, to me, in my experience, almost go hand in hand. Um, just touching on that mental health itself, um, I know yourself, you've recently had some terrible news within family, but before that, you were, you've you been through your highs and lows as well, haven't you? And, um, what, what would you say about A, your experience with mental health and also the, the, the health out there, what you found helpful for you and how you've got through situations? What I'd say is it's, I think the, again, a bit like with when we, when we first admit that we're powers, powers over gambling, um, we have our physical health, um, we also have as, as mental health. And we know sometimes when, when you get an injury, you're not 100%. It's exactly the same, no different from the mental side of things. Um, I mean, there's no... There's no, again, there's no, everyone's different, but there's nothing wrong. We've all got mental health at the end of the day. We've all got mental health. It's just at the levels what we're at. Some people suffer more than others. And it's when our bodies and our minds are not feeling how how we how we used to feel. And again, I, I always think back to when I was a kid, when you don't have a, a care in the world, when you've got no worries, where it's actually when you're, when you grow up um, and become a, a young adult into a, a, a grown woman or a grown man, that um, that you realise and you feel these things. 
Um, and again, you touched upon it about with um, with a recent loss in, in the family um, not so long back. It helps you deal with situations like that, along with, yes, it does help not betting, no, not gambling, and them to coincide with each other, the mental health side of things and and the gambling, um, from my experience. Now, I'm not saying for everyone else because some, some people don't gamble and, and they suffer from mental health issues as well. Um, again, go for, in my personal experience, going to GA and speaking has helped me tenfold, pardon the pun, pun um, to speak out in general. And when I'm not feeling so good, um, I know that I now I have a counsellor in Doncaster um, that I have every couple of weeks and it just keeps me topped up and keeps me keeps me going um, and they it keeps me it, it just keep, it keeps me on my toes and, and I know that at times I'm not going to have the best of days and it's recognising when they, uh, those day, days come that I put them into practice from and again this goes back to as not feeling ourselves um, in our in in a, in our brains and and what's going on um, with his bodies and an instinct that if we're not feeling right, we need to speak to someone. And again, like I've touched upon on the gambling side of things, I had to do it. I had to admit step one that I was power, powerless over gambling, and it's we have to do it for ourselves for our mental health. We've got to speak up and get help. It might be a group, it might be a might be a one to one, anything, or it might be just talking to a relative. I mean, I mean, me and you a lot a lot of the time we've we've I know we suffer for it from it a lot and we do talk about it. Um and I know you ring me up and and vice versa. So I would just reiterate that for anyone out there that's that's struggling with it, then seek help like I did. Um again I recognise I mean, when I'm having down days, I have, and I think it's hereditary again. Um, there's times where I lash out, and I still do it now, and I will. Um, I'll admit that, and I this is what I'm trying to get help up with as well. Um, my current um counselor that I have, um, but again, they they te- they say to you that there's no right or wrong way, um, for doing things as long as we recognise it and we try and improve for next time. That's all we can ask, but um. Again, we've got to make sure that we look after ourselves, even if it's just picking up the phone, even if someone don't answer. We know that if we've got good friends, good family out there, that they someone will be willing to talk to you and to help you because no one wants to... I mean, I don't want to see anyone struggle. I mean, I get criticised a lot for putting myself first before others, but I think that's, that's in your nature. I don't think that's a, necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, we've got to remember that we've got to have respect for ourselves and... Um, and look at us now. We we're talking. I mean, a few years ago, I would not have been doing this. Um, we wouldn't have given it time no, of day, would we? No, no. You I know, mean, it wouldn't have. We cared about all mind. this, but we cared about gambling a lot more, and that's the blunt truth for it. What what I would say, um, and I'm sure you'll you'll agree through his experiences. Whatever addiction you you're suffering from. Um, primarily we're gambling on this channel, but any addiction really, the best piece of advice personally I received was when things are bad and really bad and your mental health's bad and your addiction's running well, if you can manage to just stop through putting barriers in place, as I mentioned on my story, through any means, just stop, abstain and then work on yourself. But the best piece of advice I received is, yes, things might be bad, just because you've stopped, it's not 100% going to get better straight away. But while ever you're not gambling, while ever you're not taking drugs, while ever you're not drinking, or whatever addiction it is, you're not making it worse. So it might be bad, it might not improve straight away, it might do, but if it doesn't, while ever you're not doing, you know, that addiction, it's not getting any worse. And that's something I, I took away and it's helped me through and I know it's helped yourself. It has, yeah. Um, just finally, before we, we wrap things up, we touched on your, earlier on in your story about you, you developed a sort of, 
you you did a bit of both gambling, bit of slots and roulette and yeah. things, but you did sports betting more than more often than not. Yeah. What do you think betting companies in in general and the sports industry, do you think there's anything that off the top of your head, I know I'm putting you on spot, but can do just to help a little bit problem gamblers or potentially children coming through now who's watching football. I mean, I'm going to do an episode on my own talking about dangers of gambling to children, but just be interested to see your Yeah, what your thoughts uh, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, Kieran, because I think gambling companies as a whole at the minute, uh, this is, again, one of my biggest bugbears. There's so much advertisement out there, so many promos, so many adverts, not just on the TV, but you've got the advertising boards at various sporting events. I don't think that the government, along with the betting companies, do enough for gambling. And the, it speaks volumes for the amount of suicides that we've had um, over the past, just from me going to GA for the last couple, of, two and a half years, lots and lots of suicides cases that I've, that I've heard of. Uh, I mean, what I would like to see from the gambling companies, um, and again, it, I think the the government hand in hand helps them as well. Um, I think they should come together, and and even if it's some sort of gathering or similar to GA where we can have a, I don't know, so in normal circumstance, normal times, go to an event, meet up, talk to people about it. Um, if they could put on an event like that. You don't see it like that. You all you all you see now is it's just adverts, advertising, yeah. it, and it's it's all good and well seeing when the fun stops. But again, I know yourself, you say the fun never started for us, and I know we've laughed about it, but yeah, it's a serious thing. When you get to a stage where you're really struggling with it, with gambling, um, our experience says fun never starts. It, it, you know. Really, we're gambling either out of desperation or just purely because we're being consumed. Every part of our being is just consumed by gambling. The thoughts that you go to sleep, think, as Jamie said, and yeah, it's to me they need to get round the table, and especially in this current COVID nineteen, you know, people losing their businesses, people losing their jobs, people losing their homes, and. The one of the easiest things to do, I suppose, is think how can I get money? How can I pay next month's mortgage? Well, let me try and win it. It's so easy, and at minute, I know they did a little bit to stop the advertising before nine pm. I think it was, but there needs to be a lot more done. There's still a long way to go, but maybe we'll we'll talk about that on another episode. But for now, I just. Thank you, Jamie, for coming on and telling no, all the story. You. You're welcome. Um, if you can help, like I said in my video, this channel is there, 12 people, and hopefully put these videos in front of people at very minimum through watching them. If it lands on a person who's struggling, they see it, they hear our stories, they're feeling the same, they don't then feel alone. And... Even if they don't get anything from it, I mean, we've spoke about Gamblers Anonymous quite a lot. Again, we're not just pushing that, we're just speaking from our experience. There is other help out there. But if, if you are struggling, you're not alone. Please help us reach people who may be struggling by leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing. And if you want to get in touch, uh, even if you've got a, a question for Jamie, my Twitter's in the description below. I will pop his Twitter in the description below. Both of us, are, I think, are at, well, we're happy to speak to you. Messages, yep. by all means. And like I said, hopefully we can, by spreading the awareness, do more to help people going through gambling addictions, addictions, and any mental health struggles. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time as I cut this video of amateurish. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.